Hello and welcome to another episode of Superpowers, the show where you get to experience the extraordinary. Hello and and today to I am going to turn off that volume there. Hang on one second. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm excited today. I have a near-death experiencer with me. Her name is Yvonne Sneeden, and I met uh, Yvonne at the uh, IONS conference uh, back in July, and uh, she's got a, a great story to share, and I'm really anxious and eager to jump into that uh, so that everyone can uh, hear about her story. And um, what I want to do, though, real quick, is uh, just take a little bit of a sidebar and uh, let you know that Yvonne will also be a speaker at the uh, IONS event, or not the IONS event, the ASCII event, uh, which is Academy for Spiritual and Consciousness Studies, um, which we're live streaming uh, coming up December 1st through December 4th in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and she'll be a speaker there, and she's also uh, going to be showing um, uh, and premiering her documentary, uh, which is called uh, Back from the Light, and so people will get a chance to see that, and it will also be available for uh, people to purchase, so um, looking forward to, to seeing that movie. We'll talk a little bit about that today, so, um, and if you would like to get live streaming tickets for the ASCII event, uh, you can go to streamingforthesoul.com and click on the ASCSI tab that's in the navigation bar and you'll find uh, tickets there. You'll find information about all the speakers. You'll find the schedule there. Um, it's going to be a great conference and I'm real excited that uh, we're a part of that and get a chance to live stream it. So uh, go to streamingforthesoul.com and find those tickets. And uh, now I would like to jump in and let's say hello to Yvonne um, Sneeden. And uh, so hello, Yvonne. How are you? Hello, Carl. Uh I'm doing well, thank you. And what about you? Well, I'm actually doing very well, thanks. I'm real excited about the event coming up and uh, excited to get a chance to see uh, your documentary and and also just hear a little bit about your story and your near-death experience. And i um, love for you to share a little bit um, about that uh, today. Thank you. Uh, um, thank you for that. I'm also excited excited about the event that's coming up in uh, December the 1st uh, of December through the, the 4th actually in Phoenix, Arizona, precisely in Scottsdale. Yeah. So that's our conference, it's a consciousness conference and we have lots of uh, very interesting um, speakers. Yeah, no, there's going to be great speakers, and there will be some some near death experience speakers there, and there and uh, uh, Lee Lawrence is going to be there, and he's uh, he had a near death experience, but he got amazing superpowers from it, so I'm excited about that. We're we're only going to be filming that one; that won't be live streamed. But um, and Gary Schwartz is going to be there, and people who uh, are familiar with uh, Suzanne Giesman have heard Suzanne talk about Gary. Um, she spoke about him at their at the last uh, two uh, IONS conferences where she was a presenter and Suzanne's a medium so um, it's all uh, it's all gonna be very exciting and I and and also Alan Huguenot will be there so it's gonna be a great exploration into consciousness and and yes. um, how that just unfolds for people uh, yes and actually you're right it's a, a big exploration and we also have uh, our specific topic this time is really the afterlife as well so that, that's why we will have several speakers that are actually near that experiencers who will be invited and uh, will share their stories and also uh, what, how it relates to oops Lost uh, Yvonne there for Lost. a second. She's kind of frozen, but uh, there there she goes. Now we got her back. Um, okay. Now, so um, actually, Yvonne, you said something that that's kind of interesting. There have been previous... Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, my 
camera decided to have a little bit of a tech issue, um, which, by the way, is not uncommon with near-death experiencers. <laughs> we get uh, get talking to them. We have all kinds of tech issues. So anyway, um, Yvonne, so getting back to what uh, um, we were talking about and that there have been previous conferences, so they have previous, uh, they've got different themes and different things happening. Is that true? Uh, it's true, and actually, for this uh, this coming year, uh, we have our conference is going to focus on the afterlife, and that's why we have many uh, speakers that are actually experiencers themselves, near death experiencers, and they will actually explain their NDE and how it connects with consciousness. So it's good. It will be a very interesting time uh, this time as well. Yes. So. Um, one of the the uh, groups of people who likes to um, watch these live streams is the in, uh, the near death experience uh, group that's on Facebook, and I notice a lot of their questions. You know, people who are just starting to talk a little bit about it and just starting to feel comfortable enough to maybe explore uh, what happened. Um, and and they always have questions and they're really interesting it's it's you know um what do you think this means what do you think that was do you think i really had a near-death experience and um tell us just a little bit about um about your experience and and um you know what it was like for you to, st to process it and start to talk about it a little bit yes and and you touch a very important point carl uh when we have a near-death experience, it, we just don't wake up saying, oh, we had a near-death experience. Uh, it, it, you process what just happened to you, and at, at some point you realize it was a near-death experience. Some of them uh, explore it immediately, but a lot of us, we process what just happened and then eventually realize that we had died and come back. Uh, as far as my experience is concerned, I... I had a near-death experience about nine years ago, and uh, after a life of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, challenges, eventually I went to the to my cardiologist and I took some medication. He, he prescribed some medication for my arrhythmia. At the same time, I had uh, a time a, a, an emotional crisis. So the two uh, the two events together, the the medication for my arrhythmia and um, my uh, emotional crisis, led to the near death experience I had. I had two near death experiences the same month. And I will just share the second one because it's the most transcending one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was, um, I was at home reading a book and, um, you know, one of the symptoms of those medications, it can be a heart stop or uh, sleep apnea. And uh, actually this time, the first one that I had, which I'm not going to share today because of the time constraint, was a sleep apnea. And the second one, the one we, uh, I'm sharing now, was actually uh, due to uh, the heart stop. And um, uh, actually, what happened was that I was reading my book, and I was laying on my sofa during, uh, at my home. And I'm reading that book, and suddenly I feel all the organs of my uh, body shutting down one by one. And at the same time, simultaneously, I slipped out of my body, so I didn't feel the pain of, of the shutting down, of the body shutting down. I didn't feel that pain. But actually what happened was that uh, from one moment I was, in my, uh, I was actually reading and uh, feeling, being there on the sofa, and the, the, the other moment, instantly, I was translated in a magnificent, pure white light. And... Um, while that was happening, I find myself in that immense uh, light of joy, of happiness, of self, self-content, everything that's actually negative, all the negative emotions of, that we can have when we are here on Earth, had completely dissolved from my, from my being. I was completely in just pure, kind, loving, gentle light. And I felt, um, actually, I was in the most, the happiest feeling of love and of 
life and of uh, happiness that you can that you can actually experience. And that was the state I was in all by myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was as I was there in, in a pure light and joyful, I saw coming from a, a distance. I saw coming towards me a being of light, and uh, that being of light actually. Uh, was whirling and hovering around me. It was hovering towards me and then really uh, whirled, uh, was whirling around me and he actually engulfed me. That light, uh, that being of light engulfed me and when it engulfed me, I was instantly, um, I was instantly may informed. It's like a download. Heaven is like a download. Everything, every information you get is 100% certain. You have no hesitation, no doubts. Every information you get is is actually is actually completely certain in your in your mind. And actually, when that being engulfed me and surrounded me with love, and I instantly, I instantly knew that that being that surrounded me was Christ. Mm. It was just. Mm -hmm. It was instantly mentioned to me, and and when Christ surrounded me, the, the what I felt was actually pure love, pure kindness, pure gentleness, pure goodness, and he uh, and actually the the unique part of it is that Christ was not a male or a female gender. Christ had both gender into one. It was. It's actually like the, the the perfect parent, the mother and the father love in one unit. It's not a genderless, it's actually a both gender in one feeling. And uh, that was the love. I felt the love of the parents, actually, of my parents, of my perfect parents, with not the ones that have actually, uh, you know, uh, hurt you or wound you, but really that ideal parent feeling. And, uh, and that love was given to me. And the way he was looking at me was with, with a lot of care, a lot of gentleness, and in an awe, a very proud and very happy, uh, and, and just so happy that I was his, I was his, her baby, her child. And Christ was just kissing me all mm. around, like a mother kiss a baby, and mm -hmm. all over my face. And, and, and I don't want to be, uh, say something that actually will offend people that are religious, but he even kissed my lips like a mother kiss a baby. Uh, it was just a beautiful moment, and right. I felt safe. Yes. Yeah. And I yeah. felt safe, safe. I felt safe. I felt loved. I felt nothing could happen to me. Uh, and that's the, the the tremendous love that I was surrounded when Christ was holding me. It was just amazing. You know, I'm glad that you you talked about that, and you um, are as focused as you are on that feeling on the unconditional love because i hear that a lot from people who've had uh, near-death experiences and you know an interesting story that that came out of one of the the other speakers at ions who will coincidentally she's going to be at uh, the um, academy event in uh, in scottsdale uh, Lauren Belge was talking about she's a, a a ICU physician and so you know she hears stories from people in the ICU who have had near death experiences and and she it's interesting because um, people will have a tendency to to judge their near death experience and and try to you know, delineate and decide whether or not it was an actual near death experience and she hears a lot she said yeah you know, I didn't see anything, but I just felt this sense of unconditional love that I can't even describe. And I, uh, um, but that was really it. So I don't think it was a near death experience. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. It's one, uh, it's the big commonality. It's the love. And I think it's because uh, when we are on this earth, we are surrounded with this reality where we are in. Uh, once we leave that body and our real self, which is not that physical body that we see, this is a costume, this is a, a suit, uh, but the real us is actually the spirit that lives uh, in us, that actually gives the life in that shape that we have. So once we are outside of that shape, once we are... Uh, 
crossing through the other dimension. Uh, we actually take our real identity, our real uh, who we really are, uh, beside this uh, this actually uh, really uh, uh, narrow. Uh, outfit we we are wearing actually so we we take all we expand and we become who we really are and we are those being of love and that place where we go when uh, near that experiences go and where I, I went it's a place that, that actually is is uh, is actually is led by love the whole heaven uh, that other side Everything that lives, that exists, that works there is actually based out of love. There's nothing outside it. And, and that's why people feel that love, because suddenly we are no longer in this dimension, this reality, which is actually a very low level, a very low uh, vibration level of energy. So we, are, we tend to gravitate towards negativity, towards anger, towards violence, towards uh, wickedness, because of the low gravity that we, we are surrounded here and it's hard to to just rise above it yeah. why uh, heaven and the dimension and the vibration of heaven is a very light and a very high vibration but it's lighter so that's why there's a duality here and the the heaviest uh, which is dark uh, darker and uh, and more negative energy will always take precedent here because we are because that's what is actually a be, a be a more heavier here on earth unfortunately and then they are being of light like us uh, messenger of love that try to bring it higher but really basically when we are in the other once you slip out of your body and you go back to 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 heaven uh you are actually immersed in in, in that love and i'd heard i'd heard another way of that and that's how i felt when i was when i was right right yeah i'd heard that um uh, explained another way too that I think for our third dimensional minds and for people who are familiar with the chakra system uh, they may understand it which is that uh, our our human experience and our human way of approaching things is going from the bottom up meaning the bottom chakras so we're most focused on you know on our survival chakras and uh, what people find that they are experiencing when they're out of the body is it's more it's similar to a top-down experience which is you immediately and already know that you're a divine being and that you deserve love and that you know and, and that you are then you begin expressing that love um, you know just from that top-down order which is a much more comfortable way to go <laughs> than it is you know <laughs> dealing with just the lower survival shock chakras <laughs> yeah and the good news is that actually when we uh try to not try to fight everything but we just walk through it we can learn a lot and one of our purpose is to really learn to love and through adversity also through different situations we can rise into the love level and uh, it's, a, it's an experience, an amazing experience actually a lot of experiencers when we go to the home on the other side, heaven home, we realize that um, we do uh, all the experiences, the challenge, the, the, good, the good experience and, and the not so good experience. Actually, we, we learn so much about God's love and 95%, 96% of the experiences when they come back uh, from tomorrow, from the future in a way, uh, believe that there's a God, believe that there's a creator. Uh, every Everybody is totally sure that there is a, or a creator, a center of love, uh, a, something that actually emulates life. Uh, and uh, so we can call it whatever name we want, but uh, uh, we be, we, we've seen it, we've experienced it. And, and the good news is that we can come and say, listen, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And there is a wonderful world. There's millions and trillions of people on, on another place that actually will welcome you open arms when you go back home. And, and that's what I felt uh, and I experienced when I was with Christ. I did see um, um, Christ showed me also, um, as we were walking towards once he engulfed me, I asked many questions about life, about myself, and uh, one big commonality of uh, and the experiences 
is that once we are in that light, we're in that place, we don't want to come back here. Right. After asking, all the, <laughs> it's like we are home. We love it. Everybody's nice. Everybody's respectful. Mm -hmm. Everybody shows consideration, respect, love, care, gentleness. It's heaven, and yeah. no one wants to come back here. And I was one of them. I said, I don't want to go back. <laughs> yeah. I said, I want to stay here. <laughs> I don't like that place over there. It's dark. Uh, people, there's. It's a violent planet. Many. People are mean, are selfish, self-centered. I want to be here. This is home. Everybody's inclusive. Everybody love one another. Everybody uh, respect one another. We all one. Uh, I want to stay in this place uh, better. I like it better. And mm. but I, I really felt that it was not an option. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. With all the love Christ had for me, he had an amazing love. I mean, you can never ever imagine the love. Even what you imagine, it's 10 million times higher and more intense, the, the, the perception of love that you have over there. But Christ said to me, um, instead of bringing me back here, uh, he actually shifted in the air at some point. I'm trying to, to summarize a, a long experience. Uh, it shifted in the air and then he expanded into um, half a mile high. It's, I mean heaven is huge we we it, we have to to think outside of our small box and and imagine the immense possibility that once you're no longer in this body so uh, christ expanded in uh, at least half a mile and he was suspended like that like a huge hologram a hologram of love of compassion uh, powerful uh, immense compassion and waves of love and he actually uh, told me, Yvonne, I will give you, I will give you my power. I'll give you my strength. I'll give you my energy of life. Mm. Because I, I, I didn't want to go back. I was, yeah. I told Christ that uh, my body over there, if he was sending me back, was broken. Mm -hmm. And that it was non, it was not uh, usable anymore. So I, I was trying to negotiate with Christ to stay there, and I said, <laughs> I, I can't go back. Uh, it's all broken. I, I, the body is finished. Uh, there's no way I can go back. And he said, No, you have. You have. To, I mean, that that's when he said that he was going to give me the energy of life, right. so that I would be able to come back. And when he did that, I felt completely from. I felt my entire being. My entire being, from the nerves in my body, I felt my body regenerated and my spirit as well. Uh, I felt the nerves, the bones, the the the, um, uh, the muscles, everything that's me was totally regenerated with an energy, a, a liquid, effervescent energy of mm. life, filling me completely and regenerating and really make, bringing me back alive. Yeah, and, and strengthened so that I could go back and, and finish my mission that right. obviously was not finished. Otherwise, I, I would have been able to stay home. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's nice. when you live that. It's love uh, mm -hmm. in its highest form. And I wonder uh, if part of that mission um, isn't what occurred to you uh, when you decided to to make the documentary that you made uh, because clearly there is an energy and there is, a, is there's something exciting about that experience that you you go and you feel that like you come back and you are changed and you have a different way of perceiving things and perceiving the world and you, as uh, with a lot of people one of the things that drops away is any sort of fear of death. You go, you realize, well, there isn't anything to be afraid of. In fact, I actually would rather be there than, than, than being here. So I, I know that that's a common experience for people. And most of them say, I can't wait to go, go back home. I'm going to sleep in my own bed. And, uh, you know, and uh, you've got, uh, I know that um, one of the people that's on the, uh, the documentary is, is Dr. Mary Neal, um, who I love, who's got an amazing story too. And we were lucky enough to be able to live stream her two years ago. And also, Dave Bennett is on it and Dave was uh, or Dave's another speaker um, uh, coming up at the uh, Academy event in Scottsdale so I know that you you probably just want to share that and tell us a little bit more about just what it you know what was going through your mind and how you you decided uh, we got to make a documentary 
you did you did say a very important point, Carl. Actually, is uh, once you've been bathed in that love, and then you have to come back. You expel. You taken out of that uh, of that immense bath of love mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way. Uh, my and the end of my experience is that I merged with Christ. Christ showed me the love He had for everyone and humanity. So when you really basically merge with love itself uh, in that level of uh, and it's ex and I may not have the time today to explain uh, everything about that merge. But when you merge with love itself and you become one with it, mm -hmm. and then you're forced to come back here, it's extremely. Um, I was happy for one thing to come back. It's for my daughter because I love her dearly. That right. was the only season I think I was sent back here to be with her mm -hmm. and help her guide her through life and, and then maybe share the message of love to everyone around us because we have a lot of people that are wounded. But you, you said that so we are in, in that dimension where it's way more important than anything we live here. We come back with two realities now, we, two equal realities. And mm -hmm. even I could say where we were, it's a higher reality than what you experience here. Right. So here it's more like a dream. So when you come back from that, it's almost like before. You were in a horrible jungle, jungle with crocodiles, spiders, snakes, but you didn't realize you were in that in that world. And then suddenly you were sent to the crisp mountains of Switzerland, and yeah. and everything is beautiful, the sunshine. And then you were sent back to the jungle <laughs> and swamp. But now the difference is that you know it's a swamp, and you know there's something there. And right. that's how I can explain why I experience it have a hard time coming back it's that suddenly uh once you you are reconnected with that world of beauty and of love and of kindness and you come back it's like you have a magnifier and you see everything that's not love and you want to you want to bring that love in and you see how people all to the details we become we are different people uh, because we see every single details like a scanner and we see, we want to give that love. Wherever there is a love that's missing, you want to give it. Whenever somebody acts uh, with a lack of love, you want, to, you want to help the person and to say, well, you know, love is possible. And, and, and that love factor becomes such a big thing for everyone. And you mentioned Mary Neal, who I met as well, and we did actually do that documentary. And then when I came back, I had all those after effects. Um, mm. And, you know, I was raised a very strongly strong Christian and uh, very active in the church. And after my near death experience, I, I realized that there were uh, that actually beyond, uh, it's beautiful to have a religion, it's beautiful, but beyond it, uh, it is actually the love that in action that was really important. And, and little by little, I opened myself to all what God had to offer, all the different v v variety of forms of expressing love and expressing your connection with 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 a, with source, with the Creator, with love. So this was a big change for me: is that I opened up my understanding. My uh, I judged less uh, people that were not believing like me. Uh, I just opened up to others and understood that uh, that heaven is so immense and. Uh, people are, um, as long as you find uh, love, it, you know, in action, that's you, you are on the right path in, in every form you want. So uh, I was changed actually in many ways. Uh, physically, I started, I, I saw some changes too, in the sense that uh, I, um, I wanted to uh, physiologically I, or physically or my health style, I, mm -hmm. I became very organic. And that's a big after effect of people that had a near that experience. And that's why I created that documentary uh, in mm -hmm. co, uh, in co um, in co with, with my co-producer, Robert Neil Marshall together, because I went through those after effects and I thought if I have some after effects, I think other ones have, and I want to know them and I want to hear what they have to say. And that's how we, we went and interviewed about 20 people around the, the US and in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And also Harry Neal was is in it, in it and Raj, Dr. Rajiv Party as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so because they had after effect, it's very difficult to have been in a wonderful place where everybody's kind, where everybody is 
is um, has understood the whole picture of life, and then you have to come back and live in a world where where it's not the case, and you know you are actually bringing more to it. Um, physiologically, people change. They they want to eat healthier, mm -hmm. less meat. They feel connected to nature. We feel connected to nature. We feel connected to to the animal world. Every, everything needs to be respected. Everything that's created has to be respected. That's a big change. Another change is uh, people start to have supernatural gifts, uh, you know, superpowers, like you say. Mm -hmm. uh, we become extremely sensitive to our surrounding. We feel what the other people feel. We feel we understand the pain and the joy. So, so there is a, a, a tendency to kind of isolate yourself. Right. Because if you go outside, you can hear everybody, you can feel the need. One day, I remember I was at, uh, um, at a recital and, and I was watching somebody singing and I heard the people behind me and around me, what they were thinking, you know, mm. and it was just, I had said, oh my gosh, I could hear all the voices of the people, uh, they, what they were thinking. So these are kind of things we have to live with. Right. Uh, when it's back, so there's so many after effects physiologically, and uh, and also the family, they they are wondering who they have <laughs> now in their families. Right. Yeah. Somebody who was alpha male, somebody was an alpha male wanting to make 200k in pharmaceutical. Suddenly, he wants to become a uh, a nurse to help uh, to help to help heal, and then he and his his salary shifts, and then his right. wife said, "Well, I didn't marry somebody who was making." five times less and, and then yeah. you know, there's so all those practicality things that that change the focus change our focus right. change definitely in yeah. a more human yeah. and loving way yeah so you know Yvonne you did have um a lot of uh different after effects and those kinds of things happening I'm sure that other people who have had a, a uh, near-death experience and maybe they haven't talked about it yet um, are experiencing some after effects and different things and some surprises and they're they're kind of it's not just their family that's saying who are you they're kind of saying that about themselves like who am I what what happened and um, I wonder how helpful was it for you when to begin just sharing that your experience and uh, was it difficult to, to get to the point where you were comfortable sharing your experience with people? At the beginning, actually, uh, I went to a group of near-death experiencers. And when I started to share, I was always saying to the group, it was at IANS, actually, International Association of Near-Death Studies, a, a local group. And at my very first time, I shared it to a group. And I, I kept saying, I'm not crazy. Uh, it really happened to me, you know, that happened. Can I share that? I'm not sure if I, I dare. And I kept really being afraid that what I was going to share was going to be too much for people to, to believe and to understand and because it's so much outlandish. And I was, I had, I was very fortunate to be in an environment where people, actually, it is the organization uh, actually uh, handling uh, and uh, studying and researching the near that uh, experience. So I was in good hands. I was in a place where they immediately put me at ease and said, Yvonne, you have free rides. You can say everything. We'll never be shocked. We'll never be. Just go ahead and, and be yourself and share. Mm -hmm. So I was very fortunate to be in that environment and I was able to share uh, everything and also what the, what I learned from the, the other side and Actually, I became myself. They gave. I, I am now the leader of I of the Ions Group for the Raleigh area, North Carolina, mm -hmm. um, and we have. Uh, and so, so that's the beauty of it. At first, I was the one that needed help and needed to be understood. And now, now I'm able to do that for others as well that are wondering what happened to them. And we have a monthly meeting, and we just share together. We invite somebody. We we listen to them and help them understand who they are. And, and, and the, going back to the documentary, Back from the Light, that's the title, Back from the Light. What I like about it is that, uh, do, you, do you know, there's, there are 8 million people in the, the 8 million people in the United States that have had a near-death experience. So that documentary will make a huge impact to people that didn't have the same 
the same privilege as I had to have to have ions and a group around me to nurture me. Uh, but there are people around the country and around the world that may watch a documentary and they are alone in a village or alone in a country where there is no IMs and there is no group. And when they will hear other people and how they live their life today, it will give them hope and it will give them, uh, a, they will be encouraged to know they are not alone. That's the biggie, to feel that you're not alone. And, and that's because you feel completely misunderstood or you have that secret that you don't dare to share to anyone right and and other sharing it gives you the courage to share because you know i always say carl uh and the experiencers are very different from anybody else mm -hmm. any other spirituality that you can find people can explore all spiritualities and play with it but once you've been at home on the other side and you finally discover what it is and you come back you have a mindset that's actually wired differently everything you think everything you do is wired so differently because that experience that you had is, uh, in heaven is constantly in your mind every day you think of it every day right you, yeah you, you think of it it's part of who you are uh you are an alien on this earth now you know <laughs> in your mind yeah. And oftentimes you feel that way. And a lot of people that when they had a long NDE, when they, they had been gone for a long time, when they come back, they definitely feel like an alien and they feel that they have to relearn everything around them uh, because uh, it doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, wickedness, selfishness, uh, everything that's negative doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, to us and we are more it, it's almost like everything that was negative has been de deleted and rewired in your mind mm -hmm. and then you come back and you have a childlike mind you back into that stage of purity when the child comes on earth and mm -hmm. doesn't think bad about other people so you that's a big after effect as well a lot of nd experiencers are more like childlike minded they're very loving they, they don't think they're very naive you know they, they just believe the best and so you have to relearn that in this world you have to be a bit more careful that to to open up to everybody right you have, to, you have to and then people have to shrink again and then we come back with so much knowledge uh some experiencers know future events uh, other uh, have understood in heaven why we are on earth and what are uh, why we come here and what is the mission so our priority changes and we understand as well that many people uh, suffer on this earth uh, but could be in a very high, happy place and we are trying to bring that we are mm -hmm. trying to say listen there is there is a tomorrow <laughs> don't live like there is no tomorrow it's okay breathe uh, yeah it's right. wonderful uh, once you you reach that other side yeah so, that's, a, you know, you, you mentioned something that has been my observation, too, at the three IONS events that we've live streamed. I love being in that room. It just feels, I, it's, it's hard to even describe it, but the best, best way is probably just like your home, at, like you're at home. And there is a peace there, and there is just this, you know, love vibe that is that's happening in the room and uh you know because you're sitting in a room with a hundred NDEers, years you know who are all they i think they all bring a, as you say i it's even more than a mindset i think you bring a little bit of of heaven in you know back down to the to the third dimension with you and right. and you you're emanating it it's palpable and i love being in that room I agree with you. I completely agree with you. That's what's happening. It's almost like the veil is open mm -hmm. and we went to a place and we bring it back with us and it's constantly here. And uh, when, you know, when we hug one another, when another experiencer meet another experiencer, we, we actually uh, hug and we feel that heaven. And when we hug others, I think they can feel it too. And we have a tendency to over to over, uh, over give, and we want to give that love. We want to just embrace everyone, and mm -hmm. uh, so we understand as well that actually, when we were born here on Earth, we ha we all have had traumas, and uh, growing up in different 
as soon as we are born on this planet, everyone has trauma every day, even tiny ones. Some people being mean at you at work or your child or your parents or your uncle, your brother, your sister. Uh, we don't realize it because we're so, uh, we are so her hermetic to it now. Uh, but actually, we, do, we don't live the same life as what we live in, in heaven. And right. so people here have a tendency to close themselves uh, to that giving because they have been betrayed once in a life or, or they have hurt or they have hurt people they have been hurt so there's that wall uh, to love that actually has been built for protect for protection for self-protection and some people and we understand i understood as well that when people harm other when they are angry at others it's actually their soul suffering as well and mm -hmm. it's a soul that needs love that needs to that needs to be a, that actually is crying for uh, for that love that actually we all we all are beings of love but some of them have forgotten it right. and, and yeah. it's just to awaken up to that again and that's the message that we try to give we try to say listen uh, we know you you are important yeah. uh, that's what Jesus told me when I was in when I was in heaven he said Yvonne he said when he when he merged me with his heart with his love and we became almost one uh, Christ said to me Yvonne I love humanities I I love my babies, and when I talk about Christ, I'm not trying to 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 just to, to just bring a religion over another. I'm talking about Christ above everything, uh, right. the love and the light of Christ. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. I'm not yes. trying to to say to people to go yes. in any kind of religion. I'm talking about above it, uh, the right. love of Christ, which is for everyone. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Well, and, and a lot of uh, people refer to that as Christ consciousness, and so as as a way to to separate a little bit from the person of Jesus. You know, that Jesus obviously had the Christ consciousness, um, but the Christ consciousness is something that exists that can be tapped into um, by anyone, and it, and it doesn't require religion or Christianity or anything to, to get there. I agree with you. I do. Uh, I've seen Christ or Jesus several times, so I can't say that it wasn't the same person because mm -hmm. I've, I've been around Christ. I think it's the same person. It's the same being uh, who had a journey on earth. And mm -hmm. then when he was no longer on earth, he reintegrated who he was, that, that amazing teacher of love, that amazing being of light. Uh, he was, it was actually the same spirit that was walking on earth for this journey. Right. And who integrate his spirit and the whole magnificence of it, mm -hmm. and that whole magnificence is the Christ consciousness. That's how I interpret it with the, the multiple visits. I, if I don't say that, I would feel that I'm betraying Christ that I have seen so many times, and right. I would feel comfortable. I, I have to be honest. That's that's how I experience it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, the same spirit of light that came uh, as a human, like we come, we are a spirit of light. Uh, we are light, we are beings of light, and, and we came on earth uh, to experience what we are ex experienced. But there are, but there are trillions of spirit in heaven that never comes on earth, never come on right. earth, yeah. never experience what we experience. So we, we are on a mission here to experience what we are experiencing here. Right. I, I don't. I don't want to contradict anyone. I, I just bring my own experience sure. to, to, to it all. <laughs> sure. So now, Yvonne, um, you're speaking at the uh, the Academy for S Spiritual and Consciousness Studies event in Scottsdale. Uh, tell us when you're speaking and how people can can find you, so they can. Um, or I'll tell them how to find you, but tell them when, when you're speaking and just a little bit about uh, what your topic is going to be. Okay, so thank you. I will be speaking on the Saturday, December uh, the 3rd, and it will be on at 3 p.m. I will be talking sp uh, specifically about the near-death experience after effect in details. What is the near-death experience and and how it affects your everyday life and what uh, just uh, all the studies that have been done uh, regarding the after effects that right. will be that will be actually the the content of my presentation 
And in the evening, I will be again there to actually show uh, the, the, the documentary Back from the Lights and introduce uh, what it is, introduce, and we will have a panel of discussion after with some of the experiencers who, uh, that will be present and who, was, who were actually in the documentary as well. So they, they will be there as well. We will be three of them. We will have three of them present and they will answer questions as well. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's it, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, um, very exciting. And now, unfortunately, uh, the documentary will not be part of the live stream, but you are releasing it. So it's yeah. going to be available for people and tell people uh, uh, starting on, I think, the 1st of December. Is that right? Yes. Uh, absolutely, Carl. Uh, actually, we have the movie. The movie's ready. We will be able to distribute it starting from the 1st of December. You can go on our web, uh, on either on our website, backfromthelights.com, and there you can see the, the updates. But starting from the 1st of December, it will be available, but you can already pre-order it today. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not far away from 1st of December, you can already pre-order today, and you will have it first thing. As soon as it's available, it will be shipped to you. So it's an, it's an amazing documentary. It's, the only one that actually talk about the after effect that is existing right now where we where we talk about the impact of the near-death experience afterwards and how people live on an everyday basis here on earth after such an experience so it's good to to, to spread the word for around you and uh, thank you so much uh, if i have another last message i don't know if we are coming to the end uh but my message here here is coming back from it is we are regardless of what everyone is experiencing in life in general when we look at every single action of our life through love through the eyes of love we can we can make a beautiful difference in this world so, mm -hmm. yeah very nice very nice. Well, yeah, we are getting uh, close to, to wrap up time here, and I'm glad we had a chance to chat with you uh, just about your experience and about making the documentary and, and, and you know, kind of uh, how you've been, been dealing with and, and integrating the, all of that and the after effects into your life. It's, it's quite a journey, isn't it? It is a journey. It is. A, it's a. It, but it's a beautiful journey too. It's a journey that actually can be challenging because you you feel like you know all those secrets that you cannot share. But it's also a beautiful because you meet so many beautiful people around that are open to listen to your story. They are a, a thirsty to understand where they are going after this life. They want to know more. They want to know who they are really and where they go after this life and what is this life all about. And I do feel that the experiencers, the near-death experiencers, what they, why they are sent back on Earth is actually to, to be messenger of the afterlife, messenger of love, and, and also messenger uh, that actually bring to every one of us the message, turn towards the good, turn towards love, turn towards eternal. Don't be afraid of what is physical and visible today but search and listen and learn. We are in a learn. It's like a school here. It's and then you will graduate when you die, and you will graduate and go to you know to a higher school, but a loving one, an amazing place. So don't live like today's. To there is no tomorrow. There is a tomorrow and a beautiful one. Change your heart and mm -hmm. and and uh, and dare to to think that dare to believe that love ex ex still exists. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's what it is. That's the message generally that we have as experiences. <laughs> right. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for for sharing that. And and thank you for being here today and taking a little time out so that um, you could just tell us about uh, your experience and and uh, what that's been like for you. Thank you so much for inviting me, Carl. I am really appreciative and and thankful. Thank you for that. Yeah.
Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. And that is Yvonne Sneeden, and uh, she's had uh, quite an amazing journey uh, with her near-death experiences, and I'm totally excited about uh, seeing her speak at the, uh, the uh, Academy for Spiritual and Consciousness Studies uh, event that's coming up. And again, we're going to be live streaming that uh, starting on De uh, December 1st. It'll be December 1st through the 4th. And uh, the the first we open with um, Gary Schwartz. He's he's our opening keynote speaker, and that's going to be exciting and, and really wonderful. He's been doing a lot of uh, research in scientific research and statistical research into mediumship and and just consciousness itself. And so that'll be a great way to kick it off. And then uh, we got three days of uh, live streams of presenters like. Yvonne. So um, she will be there on uh, December 3rd at uh, 3 p.m. Um, that's uh, Scottsdale time. That's Arizona. So, uh, you know, check on that. But there's a full schedule of the live streaming and it's on streamingforthesoul.com. And you would just click on the ASCSI tab that's in the navigation bar, and it'll get, you can find who the speakers are going to be. You can find out uh, what the schedule is going to be. Um, it's going to be a great event, and so I hope you will join us for that. And I just want to uh, say that um, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining us on our uh, superpowers today and remind you to go out and experience the extraordinary.